The fat director stood on a box in front of all of his engines and station staff. Good evening. As most of you know, five days ago, our Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain declared war on Nazi Germany as a result of the German invasion of Poland. The War Cabinet has organized all of British Railways into one unified command until the war is over. The Northwestern Railway is the smallest of all of these railways. As a result, we've been elected to carry out a trial. All of our lighter colored locomotives will be painted black to see if this aids in the defense against possible Nazi night bombings. The gathered rail crowd listened and understood. Suddenly, life on the island was about to be very different. The first to be painted are numbers 4, 3, and 2, followed by numbers 1 and 5, and then 6 and 55. Good day. As the fat director stepped down from his makeshift podium, the majority of his engines returned to the sheds for the evening. James hadn't even stopped before he started complaining. I don't see how being painted black will help us against planes. No one cares, James. I care! I care! I think he means no one cares about what you have to say. He gets it. Oh, whatever, it's not right. It's what's necessary. You're just upset that you'll be having to give up your stupid red paint. Yes, I'm the best looker on the whole island and you know it. It would be an absolute shame for me to give that up. After that, the others just ignored him for the rest of the night. Two days later, James was sitting at the big station when Gordon came in for the first time in black. I could barely see you coming out of the tunnel. You blended in so well. Oh ha ha! Soon enough you'll be just like this. Ugh, yeah, I know. Four days after the Fed Director's speech, it was James's turn to be turned black. The haughty, once red engine hated it. He complained to no end. No one's gonna take my picture anymore. James, if you stayed red, they'd certainly take a picture of you. They'd take pictures of your remains when you're hit by a bomb. Now shut up! And James did. For a whole evening at least. He didn't stop complaining in the entirety until about a month after the war began. Henry was ill one autumn morning so James had to fill in for him on the flying kipper. He was waiting on the quay at the harbor, shivering in the cold October air. He was given orders to shunt a small ammunition train into a key shed. Suddenly, James heard a droning from overhead. The recently installed anti-aircraft gun started firing off, rounds bursting into the air. Quickly, James, quickly! James' driver shouted as he threw him into reverse, pulling the vans off the harbor key. The airborne hunter closed the distance to the key. James braced himself for fire as an explosion rang out in the crisp night air. To his surprise, he kept going uninterrupted. Finally, he came to a complete stop in the passing sightings. He ran back to the quay to find a large ship engulfed in flames. That would have been us if we hadn't been painted black. We're a much bigger target than some medium-sized trawler. With all of our ammo, we would have taken down half the harbor. James could only agree as they moved off to turn around. He'd gained a new respect for the new coat of paint. This wall's gonna be a real slog, he thought to himself. James had no idea how right he was going to be.